Hello, and thank you for volunteering to teach art history lessons for grade one this year. The portfolios for each grade share a common theme. In grade one, the children look at artwork with a theme that is very familiar to them and easy to relate to, children. We will look at paintings with children in them, discuss how children see the world through art, and see how they inspire artists to see things through their eyes. Take a few minutes to familiarize the kids with the overall theme for the year before you begin. Today we will look at the first portfolio of the year. Portfolio 1 focuses on reading a painting, ways to enjoy art. In this lesson, you will help the kids learn to look for clues within a painting. Clues to things like when was the picture painted, where does the scene take place, how were the people in the painting feeling at the time, and what story is the artist trying to tell. There are many things that the kids will observe. Let them explore each piece and come to some of their own conclusions. They will probably do more talking than you will. Painted in 1950 by American artist Philip Evergood, our first piece this month is The Sunny Side of the Street. Evergood was a New York-based artist who really focused on painting images of New York, of the neighborhood he grew up in, and the people that lived there. Ask the kids what they see in this painting that they can relate to. Some things might be the games that they're playing, some of the people in the pictures and what they're doing. Um, there's an ambulance in the background, so he really did focus on everyday events and things that happened in real life. Um, you can ask the children where they think this took place. He painted urban settings for the most part. He grew up in New York. There's some clues to that as well. Back here, you can see a little glimpse of the Brooklyn Bridge. So ask the children a little bit about the setting, and they can tell you some things about that. The name of this painting, The Sunny Side of the Street, is an interesting title. You can ask the children if they think this is an appropriate name for the piece. One of the things that he tried to convey in his work was the everyday life. Do you think this life was happy? What kind of sounds do you hear when you look at this painting? Um, was life sunny on this street? So those are some examples of things you could ask the kids to get them talking about this piece and really looking into the painting and learning how to read it. This next painting was painted in 1927 by the English painter Lawrence Stephen. Dwellings is the title of this one. Compare this one to the last painting that we looked at. Again, it's an urban setting and it deals with places where people live. In this case, it's a different country. Ask the kids where they think this painting might have been painted. This one is in England, also a scene of apartment buildings, but it has a very different feel. One of the things you could ask the children is, what do you feel like the temperature was that day? Our last painting depicted a sunny day. How about this one? Very gray skies in the background. The building is gray. The foreground is gray. It has a much colder feel. Um, this was an industrial town. It is in contrast to New York City, which was very bustling and there was a lot of color. Um, it has a very different feel to the painting. So ask the children how this painting makes them feel compared to the other one. One thing you'll see come up again and again in some of these paintings is the artist's use of red. We saw a little bit in the last one and you also see it in this one. Small little hits of color in an otherwise gray painting. The children will start to look for red in all the paintings. Artists use this as a technique to lead the eye through the painting, from the foreground to the middle ground to the background. As you go along with the lessons, the children will get used to looking for the red and will point it out to you. The next two paintings we will look at are both by the American artist Winslow Homer. Winslow Homer was born in Boston and spent much of his career in Maine. Well known for his landscapes, particularly marine paintings, he is generally considered one of the greatest American painters of the 19th century. This first painting is titled Boat Builders and was painted in 1873. You can see in this painting a depiction of two boys. You could ask the children how old they think the boys are and what are they doing. In this case, they're playing with toy boats. That's a good clue to when this painting was painted. We don't play with those toy boats quite the same way that they used to back then. Um, our toys are a little different now. Their clothing is also a clue to when this was painted, so have the children look for these kind of clues as to how old this was. Another thing you could talk about with this painting is where did this take place? Some of this scene might look familiar to them. The rocks, the ocean, the boats might remind them of Cape Cod. 
This one was actually painted in Gloucester, so not too far from the Cape. So they might see some clues in, in there as to where it was painted as well. And you might also ask the kids if this is a calm or an exciting painting to them. This scene is a peaceful one of two boys kind of playing quietly. The background is calm, the sky is blue, the ocean is calm, the sails of the boats are not too full. So it was a calm day and it does kind of have a calm feeling to it. But get their take on it, see if they find the same thing. This painting, also by Winslow Homer, is titled Breezing Up and was painted in 1876. So again, you can ask the kids some of the same questions. Is this a more active painting? Um, is it more exciting or is it calm? Some of the things they might notice are the clouds in the sky, there's definitely a little more weather. This boat in the background, its sails are full, it looks like it's speeding along. The wake in the water, they're definitely moving quickly. And the way that Winslow Homer painted the boat actually going off the page really reinforces that idea of motion and action. So this painting has a different feel than the last painting, although the subject matter is fairly similar. The boys on the boat, possibly the same boys, um, are definitely in a more active pose. Instead of playing, they're almost working. And you can see fish in the boat. So they're possibly out on a fishing trip, maybe with a grandfather um, or someone more experienced. One clue you might ask the kids to notice in this painting is the word on the boat. So we mentioned with the last one that he painted in Gloucester. Gloucester is the name of this boat as well. So you can ask them to look for that clue. And that gives a clue to where it was painted. And they may know where Gloucester is, so it's not too far from here, which is why the painting and the scene might look familiar. These next two paintings are examples of American folk painting. Folk art was considered a more primitive form of art and was usually painted by craftsmen painters with little or no formal education. In a time when only the very wealthy could afford a portrait by an accomplished artist, these painters, known as limners, would travel from town to town offering to capture likenesses for a modest price. This allowed for more people to have original artwork in their home. These paintings, known for their charm and quirkiness, may not have looked exactly like their subjects, but they did capture on canvas a way of life that's now gone. Since this was before the time of cameras, think of this as a family portrait. Painted around 1835, Erastus Salisbury Field painted this picture titled Girl Holding a Rattle. Some of the things you can ask the kids are what do their toys look like today? Is this a traditional rattle that you would see today? How about her dress? Is this a traditional dress you would see today? These things give clues into the time period and are things you can ask the kids to look for. Another thing you can point out and that they will probably point out to you is kind of a little awkward, her pose, her feet, her hand. The anatomy's not quite right on these folk art paintings, but this is due to the inexperience of the painters but it made most people very happy to have a likeness of their family in their home, including even the family cat. The kids will always spot the animals in these paintings. This next piece is titled Mrs. Freak and Baby Mary and was painted around 1674. The artist of this piece is an unknown limner artist. Oftentimes the limner artists would travel from town to town and they weren't really known, um, so they didn't know a name of this painting. In addition to painting the portraits that they did, they would sometimes bring props along with them. So they would bring jewelry and costumes. So sometimes you would see the same props and costumes in painting after painting with just different portraits of different families. With the last painting, we talked a little bit about folk art. Ask the kids what qualities of this painting make it folk art. See if they can remember some of the awkward anatomy, um, the fact that it's a family portrait, a mother and child and just the general time period of the piece. Those would be good questions to ask them and to really enforce the idea that this is folk art painted for families as a portrait by traveling artists. This last piece in this lesson was done by the artist Marc Chagall and is titled I and the Village, painted in 1911. Marc Chagall grew up in a Jewish neighborhood in a Russian village and painted many of his paintings based on his upbringing. Ask the kids what they think's going on in this painting. When we read a painting, sometimes we look for a story in the painting. Marc Chagall often drew from his dreams and his memories, and oftentimes was telling a story about his childhood. So have them look around this painting and see what they see. There is a lot in here to see. Um, 
can see. Woman milking a cow, some farmers in the field, figures are upside down, there's a church in the background which probably was speaking to his heritage, some buildings that would be in his village, and just a lot to see. Ask them what story they think he's telling. They'll come up with lots of imaginative ideas, um, but Marc Chagall often put his imagination into his work. Again, thank you for taking the time to volunteer. Don't forget to go at your own pace and don't worry about getting through all of the pieces if you're running out of time. At this age, just exposing the kids to some new forms of art and getting them to start really looking at the pieces and reading a painting is the goal. Depending on how much time you have with the class, you may want to incorporate an activity. For this lesson, for example, you could have the kids draw a dream that they remember, like Marc Chagall did. There are also coloring sheets and activities available on the Art History website, or a quick search on Pinterest can give you some great ideas. Enjoy your class.